ับเราเริ่มต้นนี้ออกจากทิศเหนือใช่ไหมถ้าคุณอยู่ในจุดที่ถูกแสดงออกมาเป็นสีแดงฉันจะเป็นเสมอว่าคุณไม่เคยใช้รถไฟหรือคุณไม่เคยคิดในเรื่องของรถไฟที่ถูกแสดงออกมาเป็นสีแดงฉันจะเป็นเสมอว่าคุณไม่เคยใช้รถไฟหรือคุณไม่เคยคิดในเรื่องของรถไฟที่ถูกแสดงออกมาเป็นสีแดงฉันจะเป็นเสมอว่าคุณไม่เคยใช้รถไฟหรือคุณไม่เคยคิดในเรื่องของรถไฟที่ถูกแสดงออกมาเป็นสีแดงฉันจะเป็นเสมอว่าคุณไม่เคยใช้รถไฟหรือคุณไม่เคยคิดในเรื่องของรถไฟที่ถูกแสดงออกมาเป็นสีแดงฉันจะเป็นเสมอว่าคุณไม่เคยใช้รถไฟหรือคุณไม่เคยคิดในเรื่องของรถไฟที่ถูกแสดงออกมาเป็นสีแดงฉันจะเป็นเสมอว่าคุณไม่เคยใช้รถไฟหรือคุณไม่เคยคิดในเรื่องของรถไฟที่ถูกแสดงออกมาเป็นสีแดงฉันจะเป็นเสมอว่าคุณไม่เคยใช้รถไฟหรือคุณไม่เคยคิดในเรื่องของรถไฟที่ถูกแสดงออกมาเป็นสี In our map of train riding inaccessibility, the blue area encompasses a huge portion of the Midwest and West. I've made this map to include most commuter rail systems, metro systems, high-frequency Amtrak routes, and high-frequency intercity routes like Brightline. So yes, the blue area might exist over places where there might be a rail system or Amtrak route, but I don't deem them useful enough or high-frequency enough to be considered. So yes, I'm looking at you, Music City Star and Rail Runner. In this video, we're not going to be crapping continuously on places with no trains. Nor is this video going to be complaining about cars. Instead, we're going to talk about how a good portion of Americans just don't understand how trains work. During this entire intro that you've seen, my friend Jeremy and I are taking two different trains from New Brunswick to Bordentown, New Jersey. I'm lucky to live somewhere in the U.S. where there's decent transit, so I have a pretty good idea of how trains work and how they can be implemented. A large portion of U.S. citizens will never experience anything like this. Oftentimes, you'll hear stories of U.S. citizens traveling to Europe or somewhere else in the world and returning with stories of grandeur about how they mostly rode trains everywhere and didn't need a car. They also will talk about how they fragrance their obvious American idiosyncrasies on cute little walkable villages and towns that are only accessible via trains. Then again, they return to their hometown somewhere in the U.S. that is in a land of suburban developments with no central downtown. They wonder to themselves, why did they enjoy going to all those places overseas? Surely it was the different cultures, or maybe the foods. But rarely do Americans make an effort to recognize that it really was the access to trains and transit that allowed those places to have nice, walkable downtowns and easy-to-access shop and bars. Like one guy once said, "Some so subtle you might not have even noticed, but your brain did." And when it comes to urban planning, most projects are voted upon, or elected officials vote on different plans. And this is where the problem of Americans not understanding trains can hurt a lot. Instead of choosing the obvious choice of basing a transit system around trains, Americans are often apprehensive about spending money on them. This stems from the lack of understanding of trains and trams because they just don't exist here, and people have never used them. Instead, American cities are often swindled by people promising the future with some gadget bond or weird amalgamation using buses. And believe me, there are some dumb proposals. <coughs> Anyway, to add to this, if Americans really don't understand passenger rail, then they really don't understand high-speed rail. But I'm lucky enough to live in one of the two small places in the U.S. currently with high-speed rail. Standing next to a train doing 150 miles an hour or more sure changes someone's opinion about high-speed rail almost instantly. And it's a huge shame that currently most U.S. citizens will never get to experience something like it unless they travel to a different country or to the two small areas in the Northeast with it. Again, most people here have no idea how trains work, and it is a massive problem. With projects like California High-Speed Rail, Texas Central, Brightline, and the recently announced expanded Amtrak map, there is hope that more and more Americans will once again understand why good transit is so incredibly important for building a better future. Thanks for watching. There will be more videos expanding on this topic in the future, so make sure you subscribe if you want to hear more. I also have a Patreon if you'd wish to support me and hear about behind the scenes. And I have a Discord full of great train and urban planning nerds that you're welcome to join. 
Thanks, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.